Hello and welcome to Electroheads. Today we're doing something a little bit different on the channel. Instead of looking at cars, electric bikes or electric scooters for adults, we're reviewing the best electric scooters for children. This is a request we've had time and time again from parents who simply just don't know where to start when it comes to choosing the best electric scooter for their child. So just before we look at these scooters, I want to make one really important point. When we review adult electric scooters, the most important thing we have in mind is safety. Are the brakes good enough? Is the scooter reliable? This is even more important when we are reviewing scooters for children. Your kids might be on these scooters, so it's really important to us that we feel confident recommending these products. We're looking at scooters from three brands, Windgu, Razor and Zinc. They all have a great reputation for making kids electric scooters. And what we'll do is help you decide which one is the best for your child. So it's time to pass you over to my little mate, Gabes. Gabes has been watching Electroheads with his dad since we launched in 2019, so he is obsessed with electric scooters. When we needed a kid to help us with this review, we put a call out on our channel, Gabes answered the call, and we thought he was perfect to do this. So I'm gonna pass you over to my assistant today, Gabes. Hello Electroheads, my name is Gabes, and Rich has asked me to review and test these kids' scooters to see which one is the best for you to buy. Let's go. This is the Razor PowerCore E90. <clears throat> I'm down here. This is the Razor PowerCore E90. It comes in two colorways green and black like you see here, and pink and black. Razor have been making non-electric scooters for kids for a really long time. They started in around 2000 when I was a fresh-faced 11-year-old with a penchant for green day and baggy time? jeans. Fast forward, and those non-electric micro scooters are everywhere. They were so popular, in fact, that Razor sold five million of them in the first six months that they sold them back in 2000. They've put all of that knowledge into making electric scooters for children now. So, we would recommend this product for eight to 10 year olds. It can take a rider of any weight up to 55 kilograms. It has an 85 watt motor that goes up to 10 miles an hour. So let's take you through what we love about this scooter. The claim of giving up to 80 minutes of continuous runtime stacked up in our testing. And as any parent will know, more runtime means less moaning. Razor's build quality is clearly a cut above its competitors. It's a little tank that feels like it will survive being chucked down on tarmac when your kid gets called in for dinner. I'm a tank! That said, it also has a retractable kickstand, so hopefully your son or daughter will use that feature when they're done with it and neatly tidy it away. It's good that this part is a voiceover because I couldn't keep a straight face on that line. The hub motor doesn't have all of the moving parts of a chain motor and therefore will require less maintenance over time. Good news for the parents out there that don't know how to change a light bulb, let alone fix a motor. Here we have our light bulb um, on the ceiling light. And here's what we didn't love so much about the E90. Because of the level to which the battery compartment is recessed below the foot stand, the ground clearance of the scooter is just a couple of inches. Children love hopping up and down curbs <laughs> on these things, and I worry that the battery could take a bit of a battering. And if I'm being really picky, then I wish it had a throttle rather than a simple on-off button for acceleration. This would just give the rider a little more control over the scooter, and would be a good learning curve for getting used to grown-up scooters in the future. But this is a minor detail. Here's what my partner in crime, Gabe's, had to say about the E90. And I just can't imagine how hard this cobblestone will be. Ah. So I like the deck because it can hold both feet. That's something I like, but it's very bumpy. Because I don't know why, that might be the tyres and it's very noisy. Thanks, Gabe's. I guess I'll start looking for a new job right now. Okay, now we're looking at a scooter for a younger age bracket. This is the Wingu M1. I'd say this is perfect for children early primary school age, so let's say four to seven. It has a top speed of five miles an hour, so your child can't go whizzing off when you're not looking, and a claimed range of about five miles. But in our testing, we found that that's closer to around three miles. That said, that makes it useful for a number of different use cases. So for example, if you wanna go for a nice relatively long stroll and you wanna have your kid come with you uh, and ride a scooter rather than moaning about their legs being tired, then they can just ride alongside you at walking pace. The other good thing about this is it is genuinely so light that it can be used 
just as a normal kick scooter without the electric assistance. So if it runs out of battery, you shouldn't get too many complaints from your child about that. It's still a lot of fun without it. And as you can see, when you turn it on, it does this really fun light show, which I think is actually quite cool because it's exciting and it's fun for kids, but it also means that people can see them coming, which is very important. Right, that's enough of me. Here's my little mate Gabe's to tell you what he thinks of this scooter. So guys, I have the smallest scooter here. From the looks of it, I would recommend it for about five, six year olds. The way the, the deck is quite um, small, I would recommend going like that. If you wanna go, you just tap, tap, Push your foot on this button. Finger can only go like five miles per hour. So you really have to push when you're riding. But if you're like, I don't know, seven years old, or actually no, five years old, this would be a really good scooter for you. This scooter is very light and it's got cool color changing lights. Now we're coming up to the danger zone or cobblestone, but I like to call it the danger zone. Okay, so we have to go quite slow. And also, this isn't me going slow, this is the bike, I mean the scooter. So now we're on the pavement, it's a bit smoother. Right then, now it's time to take a look at one of the fastest scooters of the bunch we're looking at today. This is the Zinc Eco. I'd recommend this for children aged 13 and up. That said, our test rider Gabe's is only 10 and he absolutely loved this scooter. So if your kid is a bit of an evil Knievel and is younger than 13, then maybe this is for them. But my recommendation is 13 and up and that's because of the top speed of 15 miles an hour, which is the top speed of many adult electric scooters in the EU. It can be reduced to 12.4 miles an hour or 6.2 miles an hour using the three speed modes, which you can navigate on the LCD screen here. It can take any rider up to 80 kilograms and with a 200 watt motor, it's nearly as powerful as a lot of entry level adult scooters that are around 250 watts. So it really is a scooter for adolescents. And let's take you through the things that we love about the Zinc Eco. The puncture-proof tires can withstand the destructive forces that teenagers put things through. Weighing just nine kilograms with a 200 watt motor, this is a very zippy little scooter. So little Gabe's was having a whale of a time. We've read a lot of good things about Zinc's customer service online. One of the biggest problems when shopping for scooters online is trying to work out who to trust and having positive reviews around customer service is a big plus. Here's what we don't love so much about the Zinc Eco. The electronic rear brake isn't very effective. So you'll find yourself using the step on fender brake more often than not. Personally, I think lever activated brakes are safer because they require less reaction time to activate and they're sharper. So it's a shame this doesn't have one. The tires are quite thin. Generally, the wider and thicker the tire, the safer the ride. The Zinc Eco has only six inch wheels and the tire profile and thickness are very thin. These are a little on the small side for my liking. If you want something with a thicker tire, then check out our next two products in this video. So first, let's take a look at the deck. It's got nice rubber pattern with the logo Zinc. Looks a bit like Lego pattern. It's quite cool, so now let's take it for a ride. So guys, we're currently riding and I want to see how it feels on bumpy surfaces. So I'm going on the slower speed and, okay, feels quite okay. Um, Okay, wow, so that was quite tense, but that was a step up from normal. So it just feels really nice riding, and I could really get used to this. I do have an electric scooter myself, because I was in an Electroheads video where I reviewed it, and I did get to keep it, and we'll put that in like the link in the description. So it's just basically really fun to ride around. The Razor Powercore S85. I think this is the best and safest scooter for kids aged eight to 12. And a big reason for that is despite the fact it has a lower top speed of 10 miles an hour in comparison to the Zinc Eco, which is 15 miles an hour, I just want you to look at one thing. So look at these tires and we're gonna compare them to the tires on the Zinc Eco. So we've got eight inch tires here and six inch tires here. Not only that, but we soak up 
a lot of bumps in the road. What that is going to do is provide a much sturdier and safer ride for whoever is riding this scooter. It's not just a safety feature, it's also a usability feature. So this will be much better off-road, on gravel or trails, and you can ride it on tarmac. Whereas I personally wouldn't take this off of tarmac. So let's take a look at what we love about the Razor PowerCore S85. I've already mentioned the thick tread tires, but I didn't mention their pneumatic. These are pneumatic tires. This adds further cushioning that acts as a quasi-suspension, making it a very comfortable ride. The S85 has a lever brake and a foot brake. This ensures your child can come to a stop quickly if they have to. The handlebars on the S85 are covered in a soft covering, making it easy going on the hands and wrists. As with the other Razor in this video, the build quality is very impressive. It feels like Razor have used their decades of micro scooter experience to build something bomb-proof. Not literally. The S85 owner's manual comes with detailed instructions on how to replace parts if anything goes wrong, right down to the brakes and tires. Not everyone wants to be doing this themselves, but it just shows that Razor care about their customers, which is nice to see. If I was going to change one thing about this scooter, it would be to make it a little quieter. The Razor's motor is louder than the Zinc's or the Wingu's, but I suppose the other way of looking at this is that people will definitely hear your child coming, which is probably an unintended safety feature. So before I pass you over to my little power Gabe's, I want to say this is officially an Electrohead's recommended product. I feel very comfortable saying that you should buy this for your 8 to 12 year old child, that it will be safe and that it will be reliable. So there you have it, Electrohead's recommended product and we've got all the details about it in the link in the description below this video. Right, over to you Gabe's. And so let's talk a bit about the deck here where you put your feet. So it's got the logos, Razor, PowerCore, so that's quite cool. Nice design and everything, but, and let's see how comfortable it is. So this is comfortable and nice, and that's, this is probably my favorite way of doing it. You can also do it like that. It's not as comfy though, and might not hold your balance. So let's take this thing for, for <laughs> let's take this thing for a ride. Very fast, very, very, very fast. So, now let's make a pit stop and get some of the other scooters. I want more. This is very fun, guys, very fun. So, I really like about this scooter, the big pneumatic tire at the front, which makes the cobble feel way more comfortable, and it's really, a nice design, I like it a lot. This is probably, this is definitely my second favourite out of all of the scooters that I'm reviewing today. So just take this all for a ride. And finally, we are looking at the Windgoo T10. This is certainly an electric scooter for teenagers and not for younger kids. It has a top speed of 15 miles an hour and a claimed range of 15 kilometers. Its eight inch tires, for me, give it the edge over the Zinc Eco. So let's take a look at what we love about the Windgoo T10. The integrated front light is a nice touch that none of the other scooters in this video have and a good little safety feature for being seen. Whenever your scooter's on, that front light can be on. Its puncture-proof 8-inch tyres feel teenager-proof for sure. It's so unfair, I hate you! I like the design of the stem. The way it curves back is ergonomic and creates a comfortable ride. That said, everything I know about engineering tells me this is a potential weak spot on the scooter. What do you know about it? And here's what we don't love so much about the Wingu T10. There's no lever brake, just an electronic brake and a foot brake, meaning it takes longer to slow down than the Razors, for example. It claims a max rider weight of 120 kilograms, but I can tell you, as somebody who weighs 90 kilograms, that you probably shouldn't ride this if you're heavier than around 80 kilos, as it just won't get up hills or inclines and it won't get to the top speed. Let's see what Gabe thinks of the T10. So let's take a look at the depths. This bit is like plasticky metal, mostly metal. This got this board here covered in like sand, I guess. Uh, I think that's like the design you get on skateboards and then wind goo that's probably the name of the brand that makes this it's quite simple but i really like it so let's take this for a ride i really like this lie um because it's quite in a nice shape it has a nice like feel to it you just feel like i don't know your you're just 
not like I don't know it has a different feel to it but it is really cool and it helps you see at night so um and so I think it's probably sensed and it will come on when it's getting darker so I don't know we might do a take when it's dark we're probably not going to though because I need to go home and stuff but yeah okay so let's wrap this up if you are interested in buying any of the electric scooters we've covered today, we have added links in the description below this video. These are our two highly recommended scooters, but we think all five of the scooters are good options depending on what you're looking for. Before you do buy an electric scooter for your child, please bear in mind that they are not toys. They're motorized vehicles and safety precautions should be taken when riding them. I always wear a helmet when riding a scooter and so should any child doing so. Also, perhaps consider wrist guards, knee pads and elbow pads because things can go wrong when you're riding these things around. We do have plenty of videos on Electroheads about safety, so if you are not subscribed to our channel, then please go ahead, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and if you have any questions about any of these scooters, feel free to ask me a question in the comments and I will do my best to answer. One last thing, don't ride any of these scooters in the rain. They are electronic products and riding them in the rain could damage them and it could void your warranty. So that's it, I think. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this helpful and good luck in buying the electric scooter that you're looking for. Take care. Each new blessing I receive It keeps bringing